Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Faith, and this is the Mental Health Association of Central Florida's continued video series known as Coping Together. I'm very excited to introduce the guest for this week. Um, his name is Paul Carey, and he's from Brave Health, who's here to talk with us today about telehealth and what really is it and how to go about getting um, involved in it. So, Paul, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Faith. Thank you so much for asking. And hello, everyone. I just want to say a special thank you to the Mental Health Association of Central Florida for allowing Brave this platform today. We truly appreciate it and we're so happy to be part of this conversation. Uh, again, my name is Paul Carey and I'm with Brave Health. Just a little about Brave, we are a telehealth enabled program offering therapy, psychiatry and counseling services to those suffering from mental health and addiction diagnoses. Uh, in addition, we do offer medication management and medicated assisted treatment, all virtually. We are able to treat ages 13 and over, and we accept most insurance programs, including Medicaid and Medicare. That's really, really wonderful. Thank you so much, Paul. And if you don't mind asking, um, so what exactly is telehealth, I guess, is a great, is a great way to start. Sure, of course. So I always give the best example by you to, and, and telling you a little bit about the BRAVE process. Uh, it's basically the client, physician, or provider can call, email, or text us. From there, our access team will intercept and intake will begin. This will confirm the client's a good fit for BRAVE. And then, of course, if not, we have a list of resources um, and providers in the area that we can refer them to. Uh, once accepted, we'll book the first consultation based on the time that's convenient for them. And then once, they, once that is um, taken place, they'll receive a text reminder with a link. And from there, they'll enter a Zoom-like portal to actually complete their session. And just to reassure everybody, Brave Health is CARF accredited and also DCF accredited. Okay, and um, for those of us who might not be a little bit familiar with some of those terms, can you elaborate for me? What does it mean to be accredited um, by those associations or organizations? Of course, of course, great, great question. Uh, so for CARF, it's the Commission of Accreditation of Rehabilitation Services. So it basically says we have the gold standard to help individuals suffering from mental health and addiction. And DCF is the Department of Children and Family Services. So it's just basically two organizations that have the control to say, look, you guys are doing what is right for this community. You're doing it ethically and at the standard that we expect. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you again for elaborating on that of for course. my sake and for some of our viewers as well. Um, and so in talking about telehealth and talking about Brave Health, I know that Brave Health has been around um, for longer than what our community is currently facing with COVID-19 and social distancing. Um, so in the creation of it and in a lot of the creation of telehealth before now, was it made primarily um, with the intention of reaching people who maybe didn't have access to drive to a psychiatrist's office, like people in rural areas, or you know, what's what's the basis intention behind telehealth? So for Brave Health, um, I know that our intention initially before COVID nineteen was to reach the rural areas, and so hospitals, people that have to drive two hours to an inpatient, outpatient facility um, to be seen. So we wanted to allow, allow these people that don't necessarily think they even have. The, um, the chance to get the help that they deserve by now incorporating telehealth and offering these services and just really letting these individuals know that we are here to help. I think I read that 56% 50 per, of individuals in the US go unhelped, untapped, at, meaning they don't get assistance when it comes to mental health and addiction services. Wow, that's that's a just kind of shocking number. And I mean, you know, not only, number. People, not only people for in the mental health field, but for, for people out of it. And so it, it definitely sounds like telehealth is something that is valued and already was valued before COVID-19. And so I, I guess the question playing is, um, what are the, like, the pros and cons of telehealth? 
So I would say the pros of uh, telehealth are flexible schedule. Um, the great thing about us is Brave has extended hours now with COVID-19 in place. So we went from um, offering our services from 9 to 6 p.m. So 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now we're doing 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And we just found now that, you know, with COVID in place that we needed to extend the hours. But this is also helping individuals now going back to work under these circumstances. So there's the amount of stress from work and then also still having to quarantine and still having to be precautious of what's going on in their surroundings. So allowing them after work to make sure that they have that time allotted to meet with their therapist. So that, that's a huge pro that we, we like to um, put out there. I would also say convenience. Um, I would say greater access um, as far as treatment outcomes in place. Um, I would say also improve quality. I think countless studies have shown over you know, the last de decade that telehealth provides the same quality of care that is on par with traditional uh, in-person services. I would then say the cons, because there are cons to everything. And I was talking earlier about continuum of care and how important it is. If somebody's suffering from addiction, you know, uh, heavily, maybe they're abusing heroin, alcohol, you know, it's so important to get them into an inpatient facility for detox treatment and then step down and stick to that continuum of care. But it's also important in between those services that they get the therapy and the counseling that they need just in, just in case they do have that time span going from facility to facility. And that's where we can step in and help. But yes, I would say, you know, the, the biggest con is probably the in-person because we still know that in-person treatment is hugely successful. But we've also found that with telehealth, it's helping those gaps as well. I was on mute, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> no, you're fine. I can definitely see where, you know, I agree with you that telehealth can be very advantageous. And that is a good transition for me into obviously what a lot of us are facing right now, which is, is COVID-19. and. Um, I know that for Florida, at least, and, uh, and other states, they're starting to um, lift some of the orders that are in place, and people are able to start seeing face-to-face -face again, things like that. But, you know, one of the things that has been so important with COVID-19 has been that transitional phase of, like you talked about, the, the lack of in-person interaction. And so I guess one thing I'm wondering is how does telehealth play a role into what has been happening with social distancing? You know, how can we help people be more comfortable with that transition into telehealth with someone who's, who's so used to seeing that person in person for services? I think, you know, personally, you know, I always, I'm pretty open about my own struggles that I've been through. And this has been a process for myself. I was seeing, seeing a therapist in person and I've had to make the transition over to telehealth. And it's one of those things where you just literally have to readjust your process at the end of the day. And at first we have our fears and we have our anxieties about change. I know that that's a huge thing for a lot of us. We don't like change and we've had to do a lot of it over the last couple months. And so that has brought on anxiety. It's brought on a lot of different emotions and a lot of different people and everybody's different. But I know that personally it's worked for me because I'm continuing to be able to speak with my therapist. I'm continuing to get that treatment, that point of view that I need at the end of the day. So I look at it this way. It's, you know, it, with the process in place, um, you know, you could wait until everything opens up or you can try this alternative and see if it works for you. Everybody's different. It doesn't work for everyone. And that's what I always like to be honest and truthful about, but it does work and it's been proven to work. So I always say, at least give it a try. I very much appreciate you kind of elaborating on the fact that um, it's a very individual process and it doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So everyone is entitled to how they feel about it. We're all valid in our anxieties and our concerns, especially for those of us maybe who aren't so comfortable with 
um, sharing ourselves to someone over, over a screen. There's that lack of body language. There's um, obviously features like Zoom and FaceTime and things like that make it a little bit easier because we're able to see facial expressions, things like that. But again, I think it's important that we also, like you said, identify that it's not the same experience. It is a, it's a transition, it's a shift. And like you said, that's so much of what's going on right now, um, mm -hmm. what has been going on in our country and, and really in the world. And so I guess for me, I really, it's, it sounds like telehealth is something that's very valid and very important in the mental health community. And I know it's not really your area of expertise, but in regards to physical health, do you know if that's something that um, physicians are also starting to turn to starting to transition to um, for someone who maybe needs a, a prescription for something physically health related or anything like that? Totally. Um, I know firsthand. Um, I had, you know, again, speaking from personal experience, um, I was due for my six month checkup with um, my, my PCP, uh, which is my primary physician, of course, and I did it completely over a virtual format. So I know this is being incorporated. I know that people are adjusting. Um, yes, we've been doing it since 2017, but I think it's incredible to see the overwhelming response of people switching over to a virtual format, because at the end of the day, we just don't know when this is exactly going to go away, if ever. So I feel as though this is gonna be a, a new process going forward. So I think it's incredible that people are getting on board with the method. No, that I do agree with you there, that it seems like this might be, like, like as we said, it's a change and it might be shifting into a little bit of a new normal. And, and that being said, moving forward, do you think that with the, you know, your own experience with telehealth personally and you working with a telehealth-based company, do you think moving forward, um, like after COVID-19, do you think that more physicians might even keep the telehealth aspect because of um, a lot of the benefits that we've seen in it, as you said, with um, the flexibility, with the um, being able to reach out of range, things like that? I, I definitely think so. Uh, I think just from the number that I was speaking about earlier, about the 56% of individuals that do not get treatment. This is allowing them that opportunity to get that treatment. Now they know they can just easily sign on to an app and seek treatment from a therapist or a psychiatrist or a doctor. So, and I've even heard that even pain management facilities are doing it. Um, you know, uh, physical therapists, occupational therapists. So it's incredible to see everyone jumping on board because I think we know at the end of the day, this is something that's going to become the new normal. Yeah, I, I definitely do agree with you there. And I, I see what you're saying about the, um, just that, that natural shift that's really going on. And so I think with that, those are really all the questions that I have for you. I really appreciate you elaborating a little bit on telehealth. Um, I know at some point we also, you know, want to talk, um, talking to you guys now, I think we really want to talk about at some point the difference between telehealth and telepsychiatry and, and things like that and how they differ. Um, so I'm looking forward to at some point talking about that as well. Um, if there's any other questions or anything that you have at any point, um, Paul, please feel free to contact me. Um, to you all, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to reach out in the comments below. Um, also, please feel free to reach out to Brave Health if you're interested in um, telehealth. They're one of many. They're a really great option of um, really being able, like, like Paul said, and like we've really talked about with um, wanting to be able to help anybody who really needs it. And I think with you know this being May of Mental Health Awareness Month, that's something that um, we're all really trying to do. And with COVID, we're seeing even more of the importance um, that mental health really has on us as a whole, on our physical health, um, and all those aspects. So with that being said, Paul, thank you so much for being here. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. Bye, everyone.